Analyzing the relationships between countries can further one's understanding of our world. The data from the Country Similarity Index was used to determine the most similar countries to each nation. It weighs equally five major aspects of countries, their demographics, culture, politics, infrastructure and geography. By linking each country to its two most similar counterparts, a unique picture emerges. This map of the world shows that some countries connect to two different regions or two different continents. In fact, Mauritius is particularly unique since it is connected to three different world regions. Although the island nation is considered to be part of the African continent, it really has more traits of countries in the Caribbean. Trinidad and Tobago, Sri Lanka and even Fiji in the South Pacific have a lot in common with it. These countries are tropical islands that have a lot of people with South Asian ancestry. Historical migration patterns and British colonialism have had a great impact on these countries. Cape Verde is another island nation that is off the coast of Africa. It has many traits in common with Latin American countries. In fact, Cape Verde's level of development is more similar to Latin America than Sub-Saharan Africa. Since it is a former Portuguese colony, it shares some characteristics with both Brazil and Angola. Most people in these countries natively speak forms of Portuguese. They are also predominantly Roman Catholic due to colonialism. The Sahel region of Africa is another place that has traits of two different regions. Some geographers consider Sudan and Mauritania to be part of the Middle East and North Africa, while others consider them to be part of Sub-Saharan Africa. On one hand, these nations are predominantly Muslim countries that primarily speak Arabic and are mostly desert. On the other hand, the people in these countries have more Sub-Saharan African ancestry. Their infrastructure also tends to be not as well developed as most Middle Eastern countries. Turkey is an especially difficult country to put into a specific region. It is at the crossroads of Central Asia and Europe. Perhaps many geographers mistakenly group it in with the Middle East. However, due to Ataturk's reforms, Turkey's laws are more secular than most countries in the Middle East. Its language is extremely similar to most of the Turkic languages commonly spoken in Central Asia, not Arabic or Persian. Furthermore, Turkish is now written in the Latin alphabet, like most countries in Europe and in Central Asia. Israel, another Mediterranean country, also has connections with two different regions, although it is without a doubt one of the most unique countries in the world. As a result, it does not fit in well with either European countries or Middle Eastern countries. Although it is geographically within the Middle East, many of its people are immigrants from Europe, it is also more democratic than most Middle Eastern countries and has less conservative laws. Despite being in Asia, its sports teams often compete in European competitions. Afghanistan has actually been commonly grouped into three different regions of the world in maps created by academics. The Middle East, Central Asia and even South Asia. Its most similar country, Tajikistan, is undoubtedly a Central Asian country. However, Afghanistan was not part of the Soviet Union, so its laws are far more conservative. Unlike Central Asia, the country still uses the Arabic script like Iran. Afghanistan's neighbor, Pakistan, is a transitional country between the Middle East and South Asia. It has traits of both Afghanistan and India. On one hand, Pakistan is mostly Muslim and uses the Arabic script. Furthermore, most of Pakistan's land has a desert climate. Still, like most countries in South Asia, the majority of its people speak Indic languages. Furthermore, since Pakistan was once part of India, their infrastructure is similar. They drive on the left side of the road and use Type D electrical outlets, unlike Middle Eastern countries. Bhutan has characteristics of both South Asia and Southeast Asia. Its two most similar countries are Nepal and Myanmar. Most geographers tend to group it in with South Asia. Bhutan's economic policies and infrastructure are often influenced by its close relationship with India. However, the majority of people in Bhutan are Buddhist and have East Asian ancestry like countries in mainland Southeast Asia. Vietnam is a transitional country between East Asia and Southeast Asia. China had a huge cultural influence on Vietnam throughout its history. Unlike other countries in Southeast Asia, Vietnam has a high rate of atheism. 
and also practices Mahayana Buddhism, making it more similar to East Asian countries in these respects. However, its climate is significantly hotter than most countries in East Asia. Furthermore, its infrastructure and level of development is less advanced. East Timor is one country that could be classified as either in Southeast Asia or the South Pacific. Unlike other countries in the South Pacific, it is mostly Catholic like the Philippines because it was a Portuguese colony for over 400 years. Since the country was once controlled by Indonesia, it still officially observes Muslim holidays along with Christian ones. However, people from East Timor have more Melanesian ancestry than the rest of Southeast Asia. Moreover, its level of development is not as advanced as most Southeast Asian countries. Australia is another fascinating case, connecting to both North America and Europe, despite being located in the Southern Hemisphere. As a former British colony, Australia shares strong cultural and political ties with the United Kingdom. It is also similar to other English-speaking countries with many European immigrants, like the United States and Canada. New Zealand is the only country in its geographic area with similar characteristics. Many of the other countries in close proximity to Australia, like Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, are far different. Please like and subscribe to the Objective Lists channel, as there will be even more interesting videos coming soon. For more insights and analysis, please visit objectivelists.com for new and thought-provoking articles about our world.